Hey guys, today I want to talk about a problem from Project Euler. I think this is number 15 and it was suggested by one of the viewers. So let's get to it. The problem begins with an example. So it says, starting in the top left corner of a 2x2 grid and only being able to move to the right and down, there are exactly six routes to the bottom right corner. So for example, in the first one you could move right and right and then two times down. Or in the second one, you could go right, then down, and then right, and down again. And apparently there are six ways to do this. And the problem is to find the number of routes in a grid of size 20 by 20. And if you want to give this problem a try, then pause this video here, and I will see you with the solution. So actually, I want to talk about two different ways to solve this. First, I want to talk about an algorithmic way. And after that, I want to talk about a combinatorial way to solve this. So the first thing that comes to mind is doing breadth-first search. Because breadth-first search gives you all the ways from one point to another. But a standard breadth-first search will lead to a problem here. Let me show you this. For example, let's look at this point. First breadth-first search will find three ways to get to this point. And then it will do the following calculation three times. And this is the big problem. Because we will do a lot of calculations multiple times, um, for example, in this case, we would calculate this path three times, this path three times, and this path three times. And this will be far too expensive computationally. And yeah, this is the big problem of breadth first search. It does not reuse information. So I actually started by using just this breadth first search approach, and I just waited very long, and I did not get any answer for a grid of size 2020. So I thought of a different approach. And this is where dynamic programming comes into play. Let me explain the solution with an example. The goal is to reuse some information to avoid expensive calculations. Therefore, we start with assigning a value of 1 to this point uh, 3, 3. And this 1 just means that we know one path from this point to the endpoint. Now we do breadth first search in a backwards kind of way. So we look at the top and the left neighbor of this point 3, 3. And we assign ones to those uh, nodes because we only know one way to the end. Now we expand the node 2, 3 and assign a 1 to the node 1, 3 and assign a 1 to the node 2, 2. So until now, nothing exciting happened. We only know one route from all the points that we found so far. But now something more interesting happens. When we expand this node 3, 2, we first uh, look at the left neighbor and see, okay, we can assign a 1 to this 3, 1 node because we only know one path from this node to the end. And now we reach the point 2, 2 a second time. And because we reach it a second time, we need to increase this 1 to a 2 because now we know two separate routes to the end point. So this point 2, 2 basically gets the sum of its neighbors as a new value. And the sum of its neighbors is 1 plus 1. For example, this point 1, 2 will get the sum of 1 and 2. And the point 2, 1 will get the sum of 1 and 2. And this will just be done until we reach the 0. For example, in this iteration, the point 0, 2 gets the sum of 1, 3 and 0, 3. And the point 1, 1 gets the sum of 1, 2 and 2, 1. And this will be just iterated until we reach the top left point. And the top left point will be our answer for this 0, 3 grid. So from the top left point, we have 20 different paths to reach the bottom right corner. So let's have a look at the code. It's a pretty short function, I would say. And this function is called calculate number of paths. And we have grid size at the parameter. And first of all, use this grid size to calculate a two-dimensional array of size grid size plus one times grid size plus one. And in this array, we store our green values you saw in the example. So in the beginning, all those values are zero. And now we initialize the last one at index grid size grid size to one. Additionally, we initialize a queue and this queue gets the point grid size times grid size. So this is just the bottom right point in our grid. Now, while our queue is not empty, we always pop the first value out of our queue and store it into our current variable. 
Now, as you remember from the example, we want to check the top neighbor and the left neighbor of our current node. Let's start with um, the top one. So we just check with our indexes if a top neighbor exists. So we just check if our index is still greater or equal to zero after we reduce it by one. And then we put our top neighbor inside our queue if it's not already inside our queue. And we update our path array um, by adding the current value of our path array to the top neighbor's value. And now we do the same thing for the left neighbor. We check if a left neighbor exists. And if a left neighbor exists, we put it inside our queue. If it's not already inside of it, we say, is our neighbor not in our queue? Then append it. At last, we update the path of our left neighbor by adding the current path value to it. And then somewhere in the future, when our queue is empty, we can just return the path value at index 0, 0. And this will give us the number of routes from the top left to the bottom right corner. So this was the algorithmic approach. And if you want to have a more mathematical approach, we can look at another solution. And therefore, let's look at this 2 by 2 grid. And we can denote this path here with RRDD, which stands for right, right, down, down. And for example, we could denote this path as down, down, right, right. Or this path as right down, right down. And now the interesting thing is that every path has to be a permutation of RRDD because we need to go right twice and we have to go down twice. So how many permutations of RRDD exist? If we look at the general path, so for example, x1, x2, x3, x4, and those x's just stand for either r or d, we have to set exactly two of those above x's to r. Then the other two will be set automatically to d. So we have to answer the following question, and it is how many ways exist to set exactly two x's to r? And this question is equivalent to a question that appears very often in combinatorics. And this is how many ways exist to choose a subset of two elements from a set of four elements. And for a question like how many ways exist to choose a subset of k elements from a set of n elements, we just have the binomial coefficient. So the answer is 4 choose 2. And 4 choose 2, you can just use a calculator and it will tell you this is 6. And of course, we can extend this to our problem of a grid of size 20. And this will be just 40 choose 20. And this is a very large number. So those were the two approaches. I hope this helped you and I see you in the next video.